I've had many fond memories of Second Baptist. That perhaps uh, the dearest things to me have to do with Christmas. I can remember our wonderful Christmas celebrations and how our choir used to get in the bus and ride around to visit our shut-in uh, members and sing at the hospitals and wind up in my house. And my mother had cocoa <laughs> and cookies, I think, to reward the choir when we got there. That was uh, something that made me look forward to Christmas for, I guess, for the rest of my life. When I, I got an opportunity to go around with my father and mother lots of times. And I was the youngest child, so I was there when lots of other people had gone. The church was kind of all wrapped up in my childhood. My memory of a Second Baptist, when I was a younger person, boy, I, uh, can you imagine me being shy? <laughs> but I was. My mother, she could, couldn't do, get me to do things in the church. And uh, we would have Sunday school, then we'd have uh, We'd be in church all day long, does I know that. And I was baptized when I was 13 years old. And now I am 95. Praise the Lord. And I will be 96 in November. Beautiful. I was born in 1913. Amen. My name's Austin Davids. I'm probably from the oldest family in this church. Um, my great-grandparents were members when Second Baptist was up at what amounts to now 7th and K Street, Northwest. <laughs> I think there's a bank up there right now, but uh, that's where they were members, my great-grandfather and my grandfather. At some point, they had to leave up there. And they moved down to, I think it was 9th and E, Northwest. The building is still down there because I looked it up not too long ago. And the Second Baptist Church at that point was up on the uh, second floor of this building that was at 9th and E Street, Northwest. My grandfather really started construction to get the, the members to start a construction of the current church that's on 3rd Street. And uh, they built that church, started to build, and the people who were members then, and back then there weren't too many black churches around, so there were quite a few people at the church. And they constructed, or had that church constructed, on there on 3rd Street. They were going to put a tower on the church, which would be the top of, of the church building. And uh, they ran into a financial problem. So if you look at the church today, there's no tower up there because uh, they couldn't afford it. Uh, he's the one who brought Reverend Holloman to the church. He went down to Union Station and met him there, and when he and his wife and I don't know whether any of the children were around at that point, they all came, got in the horse and wagon, and he took them up to, I know the street, but I don't know what it's called. Kingman Place. Hammond? Kingman. Kingman Place, that's it, thank you. There were several 
pastors. Uh, some of the names, I had a list of them. I don't know whether I still got that list or not. Okay. But the names, some of the names were on the windows around the church. You may, if you go up there and look at the, the, the green portion at the bottom of the church, you will see some of the names. And of course, the first one up toward the uh, north side of the building, <laughs> my grandfather and my great-grandfather's name because they're the ones that got the building mm -hmm. started. My whole family is Methodist. Yes, I was from Maryland and mm -hmm. I married my husband, Albert Dixon, who was a member of the church. Right. So I joined the church, Second Baptist, because mm -hmm. of him mm -hmm. and christened all my children here, yes. there. I took them down the country and I christened them as Methodist and brought them up here and christened them as Baptist so they could make a choice. <laughs> they could choose what they want to be. So I did that and then uh, uh, Reverend Bosley, I think Merritt's sons were here yes. and all my children were christened the Second Baptist. Um, Dr. Holloman, he said, Lena, you know, we're going to get you married. <laughs> so uh, it was a Sunday after the morning service. Uh, my first husband, Jewel Townsend, he was a member of Mount Olive Baptist Church. And Dr. Holloman all of a sudden grabbed up uh, <laughs> Mr. Gibson. Okay. And went down front, and I was married after the morning service. Oh. <laughs> it's second Baptist church. Oh, my. I've been a member of the church about 65 years. Oh, we had a situation where I used to go to church morning, noon, and night, mm -hmm. and that didn't go too well after a while. <laughs> but in the meantime, Mrs. Howell, I think somebody mentioned her name. Yeah, Howell. Gotcha. BTU, and she was a very nice lady. You could yeah, say, Miss Howell. Nice lady. I think she was originally yeah, from Virginia. I think so. And she was a nice lady. So at one point in time, to reward me for being such a good student, <laughs> they decided they were going to send me to camp. So I filled out the application to go to camp. One of the ladies that on the store on North Capitol Street. Her son was a doctor. Forget her name right now. Mrs. DeLilly. He's the one who examined me. DeLilly, yeah. Before I went to camp. And in the meantime, I got down to camp. I mean, they met us at the, you know, and the man told us, oh, I'm sorry, we had bad news. The camp burned down, the kitchen burned down. And I was sick. So I was sick. <laughs> so I came back and they allowed <laughs> Mrs. Howell say, well, I'll tell you what, you can use the monies. So I said, okay. And I had a cousin named SMA. And uh, she lived in Philadelphia. And her husband, so I just contacted her and asked her, could we come up there and visit? He had a store up there. And I worked in the store for about, a, you know, during the time I was there for about a week or so. Most enjoyable time of my life. Eating candy. Eating the goodies. <laughs> my first relationship with Second Baptist Church was when my father was pastoring down in Richmond, Virginia, the Rise of Mount Zion Baptist Church. Uh, his name is Reverend James Henry Robinson II. My grandfather was the first down there. He's digging Robinson. Now, uh, Dr. Hogman used to come every year down there and run revival for us down there. And that's where I, I met Dr. Harlan. I used to like to be in my father. They didn't have offices in those days, they had studies. I used to hide in the studies and listen to the conversation between my father and Dr. Harlan. And Dr. Harlan always had to speak big words. I never forget, he said, my mother, he loved chicken. He was compressing the chicken. My mother used to kill two or three chickens when he came. And then, uh, <laughs> I remember one time my mother asked Dr. Harlan that he wanted more chicken, and he said, no, this is sufficient. Any more will be abundant. That will be monotonous to the taste. I never forgot that. I had to learn that one. <laughs> so when we moved back to Washington, uh, Grace, actually Grace was actually promised to me. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, my daddy told me that, you know, Dr. Alma got some daughters, right? <laughs> I said, yeah, he said, yeah, yeah. the youngest uh, one about, about, about Grace. Yeah. I said, Grace, Dr. Thomas says, you look too old for you right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, well, you need to tell Grace to wait for me. <laughs> but she didn't. She back. I'm out the devil's start. 59. Yes, and, and so, and, and I ain't never, I, ain't, I have never been in no, such cold water as I was. <laughs> I was, I, was, I, was, I was glad to get out of that water. That water was cold. And I, I said to myself, I've really been baptized. <laughs>